While you remain standing, we want to get quickly into the word of the Lord. And uh, I had the privilege of setting under the conviction preaching of Orlin Ray Foss in Houston, Texas, who at least in our organization was considered the most masterful conviction preaching preacher of our time. And he used to amaze me how that he could look at a billboard and preach a sermon. He could walk into a hospital room and see a baby who had been severely burned and he could come out and preach a sermon. I've seen him <clears throat> take a napkin with just a few statements on it and preached to over 10,000 people at a general conference. <clears throat> and I had a very similar circumstance as I am preparing to go to Costa Rica at the last week of this month. I will go to Costa Rica to preach their national convention to their ministers and wives. And I do covet your prayer uh, while we are gone preaching. And <clears throat> while I have been in much prayer, wanting to impact a country that has already had great revival. Uh, I had a vision in the wee hours of the morning in deep travail and prayer. And I saw a little Costa Rican baby. Its hair was bushy and black. It was a head full of hair. I knew that it was a little Costa Rican baby. It was wrapped in little swaddling clothes. And I saw a minister holding that baby. And the Lord said, you go to Costa Rica and you preach to them and tell them that the baby will take the pain away. The baby will take the pain away. Would you lift your hands this morning just for a moment? Would you ask the Lord to help your pastor to preach what he feels like the Lord has given to him. Father, I thank you today for your goodness, for your mercy, for your grace, for your goodness, for everything that you have given to us. I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost today. Thank you, Lord, for every blessing. I pray that you help me, O oh God, today to minister what you have given to us. I pray in the name of Jesus. John chapter 16, very quickly. And I will read two verses of Scripture and then I'll let you be seated. 16, St. John chapter 16, verse 20 and 21. Verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament. But the word shall rejoice. But the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful. But your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. And in that day shall you ask me nothing, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, He will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. If the Lord would help me this morning, I do want to preach to you what the Lord has already revealed to me. The baby takes the pain away. Would you lift your hands and thank Him for His goodness, His grace, His power, His compassion, 
Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your goodness. Thank you for a manifestation of your power. Lord, I thank you for a confirmation and a witness today. Lead us and guide us, even in this place. Let the anointing of your Spirit, let it break every fetter and every yoke and every shackle. I pray that you would lead us and guide us today. Let there be something born again. Let something be born anew and afresh. Let us understand, Lord, that this Jabez territory is a very difficult territory of travail. It's first pain and then blessing. I thank you, Lord, for that understanding. Bless your people and let us hear from your word today and confirm your word with signs following, we pray, in the holy, precious name of Jesus Christ. And would you clap your hands one more time to the Lord. God bless you and you may be seated. If you would allow me the privilege, even though it would be redundant for many members here at the church, there are many that certainly are here today that have never heard it. My wife and I evangelized for approximately nine years in itinerant ministry going from place to place. We had been married for 15 years and still had no child. We know what it's like to go through the tragic loss of not just one child, but three in miscarriage. And the dream of never having a child was certainly on our mind. It was in that particular time period that men would come up, led of God, and would prophesy that my wife would indeed give birth to a child. I remember telling her uh, one night uh, after I came out of a prayer room, the Lord said, I want you to tell the congregation that your wife is about to have a baby. Now, if you understand the tragedy that we had already experienced, the pain and horrible pain that we had already endured, you will understand the magnitude of faith that it would take to obey God. When the Lord spoke that to me, I said, get thee behind me, Satan. You are not going to destroy our ministry. And, <clears throat> but the Lord said, this is not Satan. This is me. And then suddenly I opened my Bible and saw where the Lord confirmed in his word that I want you to declare those ancient things that I have spoken unto you. And I want you to speak very clearly. And so I asked my wife to stand, not wishing to make her a spectacle, but I did have to obey God. And I said, Bertha, would you please stand? And I told her, I said, "Um, I wouldn't embarrass you for anything in the world. There are members here, the Christians and family, uh, came from Pearland Tabernacle where Brother Gurley is the pastor and he was the pastor there. And I made that declaration publicly and said, please stand. And I said, you are about to have a baby. She came up as only a Louisiana girl could after church and she said, Buster, you better have heard from God tonight. All I can tell you is... Nine months and five days later, Leah, would you please stand? Leah Marie Scoggins was born. There had been much sorrow. There had been much pain. And uh, many of you have had the privilege of adopting children and what joy they have brought to you and your family. And we thank God for you and them. And I will never forget the pain of the process that it took before the child came. I remember at uh, Leah's birth, it became time for her to come, and there was complication. 
and uh, there was going to have to be a C-section. I will never forget standing beside my wife, beside the anesthesiologist, and uh, he was talking to her, and my wife uh, was awake, and she was in agonizing pain which was normal to what was going on at that time in her body. And uh, I realized that she is under tremendous amounts of pain. But when that doctor delivered our promised child and came around in front and my wife saw it, immediately the moans and groans went away. And she said, oh, she is so beautiful. But the moment they took the baby away, she began to moan and travail again. It was in this time of preparing for Leah that my mother was diagnosed with colon cancer. She was going through the battle of her life. And she was going through chemo. And right after this particular uh, service today, Uh, We're going to ask Brother George to come forward and we're going to pray for Brother George who has been in a long battle of cancer. But on top of everything else, he has been diagnosed with the possibility of Bell's palsy. Don't know for sure what it is, but I do know that God is able. I said I know that God is able. And my mother... Uh, This is twice that my mother had called. Uh, She was disconnected. She was in a backslidden state and uh, wrestling with alcoholism. And I'll never forget as a youth pastor preaching for or being the youth pastor for this great dynamic conviction preacher by the name of O.R. Foss. She called and said, I'm going to commit suicide. And I told her, I said, Mom, you, you can't give up now. If you can get back to the house of God, he, he will be waiting on you. And he will show you all of the grace and all of the mercy that you need. She went to church that night and God miraculously filled her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And we rejoice in that. Shortly after that, my stepfather also received the Holy Ghost. And, and then he was diagnosed with cancer and he passed away. My mother saw a vision that everything she touched began to blossom. There was a dead flower and she touched it and it blossomed. And the Lord was speaking to her and letting her know that everything you touch is going to be blessed, no matter what adversity or difficulty that you go through. Howbeit, many of you cancer survivors that are here that have undergone chemo, I have no understanding of what your battle has been and what you've gone through. Donna Lorisella and, and many others have gone through that battle recently. And my mother was at the point of giving up. And it just so happened that we had gone by the doctor's office and he gave us a, a little a package uh, with a little preemie diaper in it and a little uh, bottle and said, uh, just take this home and this will help you expect the future that is coming to you. And uh, here's a little kit to let you know that your little miracle is on the way. And so <clears throat> my mother, when we walked in, she began to talk and uh, she said, I, I, I don't want to live I feel like ending my entire life. She said, I'm so sick. And I felt prompted to go out and get that little diaper. And I brought the diaper back. And I said, Mom, uh, Leah will be here soon. And I know you're sick. And I know you're going through it. But I just wanted to put this on the bedpost. She said for the next two days, she began to think about the future more than she did her present situation. She said every time she would be moaning and groaning in her, in her pain, she would look at that diaper and then the Lord would speak and say, you have a future worth living for. You have something to live for. And our text here this morning, it is very clear that 
the disciples had no understanding of what Jesus was trying to communicate. He said, I am about to go away from you. He said, I am going to depart in a little while. And they could not discern what little while meant. They did not know if they would ever see him again or if not. But instead of leaving them in that place of despair, he said, I want you to understand something. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you that you shall weep. There is going to be some travail. There is going to be some lamenting. But the world shall rejoice because they think that I am through and I am over. And ye shall be sorrowful because there's going to be three days of difficulty where it looks like there is no future, there is no hope, there is nothing to live for. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again and your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man can take from you. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Notice verse 21, he said, a woman, when she is in travail, she hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for a joy that a man is born into the world. And only a woman, no man in this building could understand what I am preaching about right now. You could not really interpret and understand verse 21 like women who have given birth to children. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow. It's very painful. It's very difficult. I would say I had the privilege of uh, being youth pastor to a young couple, and they had gone through Lamaze so that he would be her breathing coach when they got into labor. Whatever you do, young man, pay close attention, and don't ever do this yourself. And his his wife uh, began hard labor and got in travail, and he was the breathing coach, and she wasn't breathing right. And he said, honey, you've got to breathe right. And finally, she, he said, trying to comfort her, said, honey, women all over the world do this every day. And then she screamed to the top of her lungs, get this maniac out of here. Every doctor on the floor began to run into the room and said, sir, you come with me. Because he had no understanding of what his wife was going through in the pain. The church is a type of mother. And there is no revival without travail. There is no revival without anguish. There is no revival without difficulty. There is no revival without carrying a burden. There is no revival. The Bible said that when Zion travailed, she brought forth. There is nothing birthed through the spiritual realm until something is carried, pain is carried. I remember hearing and reading the book, Pain the Gift, that nobody wants. People would like to have a mighty revival. They would like to have a mighty manifestation of God. They would like to have a Jabez blessing, but don't want to go through any travail to see it accomplished. They don't want to go through any pain or any sorrow. But there was not one revival in the Old Testament that was cheap. There was not one revival that did not cost people their blood, their sweat, and their tears. There was not one revival that did not have anguish and pain and sorrow in it. I will dare say that some of the most anointed men of God are men and women of God are people that have gone through trial 
and they have gone through torment and they have gone through difficulty. I know young men that their ministry calling came as a result of going home and a drunk father would beat them with a broom handle black and blue because they went to church and he said I don't mind you going to church as long as you'll let me beat you when you get home. But they would rather go to church and take the beating because they were hungry for what they had discovered. I want to tell you that revival is not cheap. I want to tell you that the gift of God is not free. I want to tell you that grace is not cheap. The grace of God that that. God gives to us unmerited favor that no man could ever earn. No woman could ever earn. You can't get good enough to deserve the grace of God. You can't get holy enough to deserve the grace of God. You can't get righteous enough to deserve the grace of God. But God is so graceful and God is so merciful that in spite of who we are, He comes to us. And he made this declaration early in his ministry. He said, in this life you shall have tribulation. There is not going to be a life free of tribulation. I wish I could tell you that the devil is the cause of all your tribulation. I wish I could tell you that God's selective manner of choosing a trial is your tribulation, but not in every case. In some cases, life is your tribulation. The fact that you got up that morning and got dressed and went to work in this life you have tribulation there are things that the devil has nothing absolutely nothing to do with but it's just the process of life if you put a try to put a a 13 inch tire on a 14 inch rim it will not work if you plug in a 220 to 110 you're going to have problems even if you use the adapter and cross over there's just some things you can create your own trial you can Create your own tribulation. You can create your own sorrow. But I've got good news that even in the midst of tribulation that we've created or tribulation that God has created according to Second Chronicles 7, 13 and 14 that if God said if I shut up the heaven that there be no rain if I, I send the locusts or the pestilence to devour the earth if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and seek my face, turn from their wicked way, and seek my face, then I will hear and I will heal. How many knows that this land is in an adverse situation right now? There is adversity in the earth. But let me tell you, in the time of trouble, there is a God that is able to do exceedingly, greatly, above everything, anything that anybody could ask. How many of you have endured hardness and gone through pain only to see it birth you into a greater realm of a promise? I went through hardships. I, uh, many of you that I'm preaching to knows what it is to go seven days without a bite to eat. You know what it is to, uh, to not have a car to drive, to have to get on the bus. You know what adverse circumstances are. You know what it's like to go through a storm or or a tornado, or a hurricane. And I look at people that their storm relocated them. Brother and Sister Roth, please stand. That that what you went through as a result of Katrina, it rerouted you from New Orleans and brought you all the way to San Antonio. It was in that time of hardship and being separated from one another and not knowing what was going to happen. But look at the blessing of God now. Look at the prayer that was birthed as a result of the endurance of the adversity that you went through. No storm could take her power away. No storm could take her talent away. No storm could take her gift away. No storm could take her hope away. No storm could take her faith away. No storm could take... Oh my, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And God began to give them promises. And there's, it's amazing what something, after you have gone through something, 
You are birthed into another place of faith. You are birthed into another realm of receiving. And there are people under the sound of my voice that you have been addicted by things, but I come to preach to you that something is about to be birthed in you and you are about to be transferred from one position to another position. And today it's heavy. And today you're short of breath. And today you you're winded and you don't know what the next step is going to be but I want to go ahead and proclaim it by faith your hope is on the way your help is on the way God is about to move you and when you get on the other side and you start holding the promise all of the battle is going to dissipate all of the storm is going to dissolve everything that you went through you came dragging in here today not knowing if I could get one step in front of the other and you came with adversity and hardship and pain you came with sorrow and perplexity you came with heaviness but God is about to give you something in the spirit there is something about to be born in you and when you look down at the baby when you look down at the newness that God is about I wish somebody believed that God's about to do something in your life I've been heavy, but something is about to be born again. I've gone through a storm. I thought I was going to lose my mind, but I came into the church house today and something has been telling me, if you can look at the baby, if you can get your eyes on the future, if you can get your eyes on the promise, suddenly you're going to be able to praise him again. You're going to rejoice in him again. You're going to shout again. You're going to believe again. You're going to run again. Somebody's about to run again. Somebody's about to shout again. Somebody's about to dance again. Somebody's about to preach again. And you're going to preach at a level you've never preached before. Oh, I'm talking about the resurrection and the life. And what the Lord was saying is you're going to travail and you're going to lament because you think I'm not getting out of the grave. He said, you're going to travail like a woman, but the minute you see the baby, he said, your pain is going to go away. They had no understanding that he was prophesying about a New Testament church that was about to be born in its infant stages. They had no idea that the New Testament church was about to be born. And they had gone through anguish. They had gone through sorrow. They had gone through difficulty. And in that process of his crucifixion, they had even become divided. But he said, I want to tell you something. I'm not Staying down, I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna get out. It's not, and when you pray, I want you to pray to the Father because I am no longer just coming God manifested in the flesh, but I will be the mighty God. I will be the everlasting Father. I came in the form of flesh to die for you, but they can't hold me. Death couldn't hold me. The grave couldn't keep me. And I'm getting up and when you see the baby born rejoice like a mama I want you to get happy folks they probably didn't get real happy till they acknowledge that he got up out of the grave that the grave could not hold him that the grave could not keep him I, I, I'm talking about the Alpha and the Omega. I'm talking about the mighty God and the everlasting Father. And the grave could not hold him. Can I go ahead and tell you in advance, your grave circumstance can't keep him from blessing you either. Your sorrow can't keep him from getting you up. I don't
don't care how down you are. I don't care how beat down you are. I don't care how broken you are. I don't care how wounded you are. If the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, it's going to quicken your mortal body. Somebody is about to get up. Somebody's about to run again. Somebody's about to leap again. Somebody's about to shout again. Somebody's about to have joy again. In this life, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I I researched on the internet what changes when you have a baby. It says you finally stop to smell the roses because your baby's finally in your arms. It says the sacrifices you thought you made to have a child no, no longer seem like a sacrifice. There are many of you that are looking for God to birth some things in you. When I think of the miracle, I mean this. Brother and Sister Porter, please stand with those babies. Born prematurely. The pain of not knowing what could happen and what would happen. Even if I could confess this, I, <clears throat> I thought, now... These are not just two babies. These babies, I want you to look at these babies. These are full grown babies. And we didn't know if they would live or die. And I watched the travail. And I watched the anguish. And I watched the hope. And I watched the faith. And when I said, I don't think we've even shouted enough yet for what God, but when the baby came and when we knew that the babies are going to be all right, the joy came of, of being able, I know what it was like to wrestle in my mind, will this one die before it's born? I want to preach to somebody. If God told you and prophesied a future to you, I don't care what demon, I don't care if your own self, I don't care what you've told yourself or what you've heard. I rebuke every negative thought. If God has given you a future, you ought to stand to your feet throw up your hands and say it won't be long until my promise is coming it won't be long until I'm holding my miracle no I'm not going to live in fear and I'm not going to live in torment I'm going to shout in advance I'm going to praise him in advance if God said it it's going to come to pass somebody ought to praise him because the baby's coming the miracle's coming The battle was long, torturous, but the babies are here, dedicated as unto the Lord in the hand of Almighty God. And the devil would love to torment you and say, but what about this? And what about that? And there are precious people that have gone through great losses in this building today. But here's the beauty. You're going to see your child again. You will shout with them again. You will rejoice. We are not like them that have no hope. The baby makes a difference in our life. We're not miserable. We're not going around, but I feel that God would have your shepherd to come against every tormenting thought. When is he going to die? When is she going to die? When are they going to be taken away? I rebuke every tormenting thought that would come from you. you I, I, from you or the devil. I take dominion and authority. May the peace that passes all understanding. Can I shout in faith? Your son's going to live. He's going to live for God again. Can I shout in faith, your daughter's going to live again. They're going to live again. Crack addiction's not going to hold them. Crystal meth is not going to hold them. Jack Daniels is not going to... I wish somebody would say, I believe the promise of God. I believe the promise of God. I believe his word. Don't fret, mama. Get on your feet and praise him. Don't fret, mama. Get on your feet. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Don't stay in depression. Start worshiping him. Start praising him. He is spirit 
and he is life. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I believe wholeheartedly that God has prophesied not only to this church. I stand knowing what pain is. I know what adversity is. I know what it is to be hit on every side. I haven't gone through some of the pains that you have gone through. There are people that have gone through enormous amounts of pain. I have no idea, as sometimes we think we're the only one with our testimony. But when I heard this year that this man, who has one of the most dynamic apostolic ministries in the church, when I heard after his parents divorced and he got on his bicycle, and how many miles was it from your house to Indianapolis? 75 miles to go see a daddy and knocked on his daddy's door and his dad said, get back to your mother. I don't want to see you. But the heavenly father said, I've got, I got something for you, Robert Bear. I'm going to give you revelations. I'm going to give you hunger. As you hunger, I'm going to give you something your own daddy could not give you. I'm going to give you something that the world can't give you. And the world will never be able to take it away. Trouble and trial and anguish and pain will only as you continue to praise me and preach my word. Will you get more powerful and will you get more anointed and will you be used of of me more than you ever have can you imagine going to see a daddy and daddy saying get back to your mother and he said as a child I just turned around got on my bicycle and did not understand the magnitude rode 75 miles back but there was a God that went into covenant with him I want to tell and make this declaration today that no matter what you're going through God is willing to take you in the palm of his hands and lead you and guide you and give you a revelation of his power and his authority no devil will ever be able to destroy you if you understand the magnitude of the call that God has given to you no pain no sorrow no difficulty Paul said is going to be able to separate me from the love of Christ. Nothing. Not anguish. Not pain. In fact, all through the Bible you'll find out that the more the devil tormented the church, the more it grew. And the more it prospered. That God always has a future for the church. There are things that only adversity and endurance can bring. And that is the message today. And for many of you that have endured, there is about to be a birthing and a renewal. Early in the morning, preparing for Costa Rica, all I saw was that beautiful brown skin Wrapped in that waddling, in swaddling clothes, looked like a little linen cloth wrapped around it. I could see that it's beautiful, bushy, black little hair. And the Lord said, you don't understand who you're about to preach to. You're about to preach to people that have gone through enormous amounts of pain. But I want you to declare to them that I have a baby that they have never seen before. And if they continue to worship me and continue to praise me, there will be a revival like eye has not seen and ear hath not heard. It will be birth as a result of their endurance. 
It will be birth as a result of their continuation. It's not time to fight. It's time to look to the future. It's time to look to the future. God is going to touch your husband. God can't touch my husband. God's going to give you a husband. God couldn't give me a husband. God's going to give me everything I need. Yes, he will. And if you keep moving and you keep pushing and you keep persevering and there's going to constantly be like that woman who was pressing through the crowd there's always going to be resistance that says no uh, he doesn't have time for you excuse me Uh, but you've got to continue to press and you've got to continue to push and you've got to continue I wish somebody would get so desperate to touch him today that you wouldn't let anything get in your way I'm not letting doubt keep me out. I'm not letting fear keep me out. I'm not letting condemnation keep me out. I'm coming to Jesus today. I'm going to get my promise. I'm going to touch him. I'm going to get my healing. I'm going to get my miracle. I'm going to get my future. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. I'm coming to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to fight for it. I'm going to reach for it. I'm going to press for it. I'm going to praise for it. And I'm going to believe for it. Stand to your feet all over this building. You came with your problem on your mind. You came with your problem. Uh, I, lately, I've been feeling the fear and the torment. God allows the shepherd to feel what you're fighting. Some of you have thought, my, I'm going to lose my mind if this pressure doesn't stop. But I've got to tell you, you're not going to lose your mind. It's going to push you into a promise that you've never even dreamed you could have. There is an anointing. Uh, If I don't get out of this, I feel like leaving. I feel like collapsing. I feel like running. I feel like retreating. And folks, you're going to back up until you're going to feel an angel. Say, don't back up anymore. Just put your hands up in the air and begin to praise him. And your miracle is going to be... Somebody ought to put your hand. I don't have anything to rock. But in a minute, there's something about to be born. There is a birth about to be born. There is a faith about to be born. There is a future about to be born. My son's going to get out of his addiction. My daughter's coming back to God. I wish somebody would start rocking a promise and believe that God is about to bring it to pass. Come on, some of you have been believing God for 20 years for your children. And you're worried. And you're fearful. But God told me to tell you, keep rocking that promise. Keep praising that promise. Keep rejoicing in Him. The baby's about to be born. And when you see the baby born, you won't remember your anguish. You won't remember your pain. You're not going to remember your sorrow. You're not going to remember all of the losses. You're going to remember the faithfulness of Almighty God. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Jesse and Amani. Please step out, bring that baby, bring Jesse Jr. and come to the front. While every head is bowed and every eye is closed, the Lord has sent me to tell you that the baby will take your pain away. It seems like a long night. You thought your dream would never come to pass. You thought that there was no future. You thought that there was no hope. You thought there was no help. Look up just a moment. My wife and I had the privilege of meeting brother and sister nuns, wonderful 
children and uh, never knew them before. They come by way of D.C. And this young man at the end of service last Sunday that was yelling out, speaking in tongues, had never received the Holy Ghost before last Sunday. It was his first time. We had the privilege of having lunch with them, and we found out that they have seen some very tragic things on the streets of D.C., some very horrible sights, very painful things. I won't get into any detail, but sweet Amani came here oppressed by spirits that would even torment her while she has been here. But Wednesday, when we baptized her in Jesus' holy name, she come out of the water speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave her the utterance. A gift that people say God's not giving anymore. You see this baby looking up at Pastor? He hasn't been able to keep his eyes off of me since he met me. And I can't keep my eyes off of him. He's staring at this microphone. Could it be that the greatest preacher that's ever put on a pair of shoes is staring up at this microphone right now? Thursday night, Amani was loud in the altar area. They thought she was a veteran Pentecostal. She talked in tongues so loud that it would run off the newcomers. And you would have thought she's been talking in tongues all her life. But when God baptized her with the Holy Ghost, He gave her a dose. Friday night, Daddy took over. I had to tell people, they're not veterans. They've just had the Holy Ghost a few days. Now, Mama and Daddy, I don't think we've had our shout yet. But it's been amazing because my mind in the last month has been consumed. But Thursday, when I started watching the baby... When I started seeing the baby speak in tongues, when I started seeing the baby, when I started seeing the baby wave their hands, when I saw the baby get up and start shouting, when I saw the baby, something revived in my spirit. It took the pain away. God says, here's the answer for your dilemma. You got to get your mind on something bigger than you are. You got to get out of Bible study chart. You got to walk into the bedroom of somebody that needs hope and needs help. You got to get your attention off of your own problem. You got to get it on a world that is lost and going to hell. Would the church raise your hands right now and start praising him for the baby? Start praising him for the revival. Start praising him for the outpour. Not by might, nor by power. Now, if you have been in torment and the devil has convinced you that your children are going to be eternally lost and they are going to go to hell, would you lose your timidity just long enough to make a public confession so that we can have a public victory? Would you raise your hands? 
I have been tormented. Thank you. I have been tormented. I have been tormented. Now, we are about to torment the tormentor. I want those who have been tormented. I want you to get out in the aisle. Forget about being cute. Forget about looking pretty. And I want you to start praising God for saving your son and saving your daughter. If he did it for Jesse, he can do it for you. If he did it for Imani, he can do it for you. If he did it for my mother, he can do it for your mother. Somebody needs to start praising him in advance. Come on, there's a baby coming. I want you to shout in expectation. I want you to praise in expectation. Come on, church. I want you to shout in advance. You're not getting my baby. You're not getting my future. You're not getting my anointing. You're not getting my sanity. You're not getting my joy. You're not getting my peace. You're not getting it. I'm coming back, and I'm going to take back everything that the devil has stolen from me. Come on, church, praise him. Some of you need another relationship. You need a birth of fire. You need a birth of joy. You need another touch of the Holy Ghost. I want you to see a baby and step out in the aisle and come and praise him in advance. Come on, start praising him in advance. You don't have to feel anything. All you have to do is know something. That greater is he that is in me that it then is in the world. I thank you for it. No music. Right now, if you need a touch of the Holy Ghost, I want you to get out of where you're at and come down to the front. I want you to start thanking God for the future that He has given to you. I want you to thank God for the miraculous. I want you to thank God in advance for every touch. There's a baby about to be born. There's a miracle about to be made manifest. There's a touch of God in this city. I want to remind this church that the first wave has a thousand in it. I want to remind you that the first wave has a thousand in it. I need a mama to get desperate. I need a daddy to get desperate. I need somebody to say, you're not getting my child. Come on, apostolic. Where are you at? Fight just a little bit more. Praise just a little bit more. Worship just a little bit more. Don't quit now, mama. You're their only hope. Don't give up now, daddy. You're their only hope. Something is about to break in here right now. Don't surrender. You're their only hope. Praise Him. On the count of three, I want there to be a shout of victory. I want you to shout for the baby that is yet unborn. One, two, three. Shout. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Claim it and proclaim it. Stand on it. Don't give up. Don't surrender. The baby's going to take your pain away. The baby's coming. Something's about to be born. If you've never had the Holy Ghost, just raise your hands right now and be born again of the Spirit of Almighty God. A baby's coming. Something is about to be born. A fire is about to be born. A faith is about to be born. A dream is about to be born. A courage is about to be born. Come on, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth every long mile. Keep 
pressing. Keep pushing. The baby's going to take your pain away. The promise is going to take your pain away. Somebody ought to start shouting in advance. Somebody ought to start dancing in advance. Come on, shout. Come on, praise Him. That's it, church. Something is moving right now. I hear the sound of a baby crying. I hear the sound of something being born anew and afresh. I hear the sound of activity. I hear new language. I hear new voices. Take your neighbor by the hand. Now, if you tell me, preacher, I refuse, then that's fine. But if you feel like God has given you a word today, that something is about to be born again, and you feel like God has spoken to you, I want you to take somebody by the hand. Get somebody you love. Somebody you're not intimidated by. I want you to take them by the hand. And I want you to see the miracle being made manifest. I had two girls standing here, had never been in this church last week. One representing India and another representing another country, Japan. And said, God has sent us here. They're already seeing a baby in a foreign country being born. They're already seeing people converted to Christianity. They've already seen it in their mind. I'm not appealing to anybody to do anything you don't want to do. But I feel there needs to be a breakthrough. I feel there needs to be a demonstration and an expectation. I want you to take that neighbor by the hand and only those of you who are absolutely convinced that God has sent you a word, I want you to take them by the hand and I want you to start rejoicing as only you know how to rejoice. I want you to start praising God uninhibited. I want you to praise Him as you know how. I want you to put joy in your mind of torment. Joy is about to flood your mind. Worry is about to be dried up in the faith of a future is about to flood you. See the baby live. See the baby running. See the baby growing. See the baby reading his Bible. See the baby developing. See the baby becoming a man. See the baby. Come on, somebody. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. This is a sovereign move of God. You've got to see the baby because the baby's going to take your pain away. That's it. Shout. That's it. If you feel like dancing, dance. Don't let anything surround you right now. Don't let anything imprison you right now. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Let everything that hath breath praise Him.